As network operators shift into the next phase of their 5G strategies, they face many operational, business and technology challenges that need to be addressed if they're to take advantage of the opportunities that 5G offers. I'm talking today with Bijoy Pankajakshan, EVP and Chief Strategy Officer at Mavenir, about some of these challenges and how they can be overcome. So, uh, Bijoy, many service providers are still evaluating the use cases they can monetize with 5G, and there are many options. Uh, what do you think are the top three challenges that service providers currently face in terms of 5G adoption? First, Jeff, thank you for having Mavenir on the air with you, Ray, and thanks for asking the question. So I would say in addition to the typical challenge that's there with uh, addressing and learning any new technology, I would highlight the first thing being the rollout of 5G in the ecosystem itself. If you look at what's happened in the US as an example, we just went through an auction of the C-band where there's close to 80 billion spent just in acquiring the spectrum. Then you had operators, the top three operators in the US uh, committing to spend another 20 billion over the next two to three years in rolling out the C-band deployment based, uh, spectrum based deployments. So it means that you're still going through a deployment phase. There's still a lot of money being spent on 5G. So the ecosystem is still maturing you're seeing different versions of, of the architecture being deployed, whether it's standalone or non-standalone, which means there's associated mobility and architecture changes that's associated with these different modes of deployment. The handsets are just rolling out, new chipsets are coming out with additional capabilities. And all of this means that the return on investment that the operator has needs to be given careful consideration. The pace at which they roll out these services will also have careful consideration given. A second part is that as we know, 5G has huge potential, but there's still a lot of debate on what are those killer use cases which will eventually drive monetization for the operators. And the good thing with 5G is that uh, you have a lower cost per gigabit, so you can expect customers to adopt those higher data rate plans, which should help the, the operators at the end of the day. And the other big part to it is also that the engagement with the operator, between the operator and the customer is becoming more digital. So you'll see more engagements by which the operators could monetize the digital engagement. Uh, for example, finding those hidden patterns that customers have and thereby trying to upsell them new services. That's one good way of thinking about it. And with 5G also have new toolkits in your, in your bucket, for example, network slicing, which would allow you to create specific services that are catered for different industries, whether it's the automobile industry or retail or healthcare. And the last part that I would highlight is that the operators themselves need to go through a digital transformation. They need to be fast and agile in the delivery of new products and services. And in this transformation, we'll see operators actually have their workloads run in a multi-cloud environment, which means that they could be running within the, the private cloud, with, within their own prem, they could be running in a public cloud or in a hybrid edge cloud. All of this means that they have to be adopting processes now for rapid design, development, testing, be it the CICD framework or the tools that are associated with automation, which are in line with the best practices in the IT industry. So going through these changes and transforming themselves to be a DSP would be the third biggest challenge that I would see that operators need to undergo. So those would be the three in my opinion. Okay, so uh, an awful lot there for the operators to consider. How can vendors such as Mavenir play a role in helping service providers to make the decisions they need to make? Yeah, so if we if we look at Mavenir's history in general, what we have done is we help operators undergo a network transformation. We do that multiple ways. We do that using the tools that we provide, whether it's automation tools or the software products that we provide, the cloud native software applications that we provide that can run in any cloud environment. So if you look at what Mavenir has in terms of a product portfolio, it's divided into two big categories. What we call is a software for mobile core. And this includes all the applications, the, uh, the customer subscriber, which could be consumer or enterprise user on a daily basis, making a voice call, making video calls, connecting to the internet for data connectivity. And, and here Mavenir has a very big market share. We are number one in virtualized voice and messaging globally. The other part of it is the software that we provide for the access and edge. And here again, we're disrupting with uh, open RAN based software, which is effectively a disaggregated software based approach to building the access network. And finally, supporting private network deployments, which is a big use case of 5G because you could now cater to 
different industry verticals. And we do that all using a common web scale platform, which allows us to run a software in an, any cloud environment. Okay. Now, web scale platform distributions are now available as open source and or as commercial distributions. Is there a good reason to consider commercial distributions for service providers, especially those building private edge clouds that are, that are cost effective? Yeah, I would say in general, when we look at this space, the telco applications have some unique requirements and it comes from the fact that you're also integrating these telco applications into the operator backend systems. In many cases, the format, the, the models in which this data gets generated, it's governed by 3GPP and other standards body the telco operators have to adhere to. So in general, these web scale platforms need the flexibility of IT as well as the flexibility that comes with the requirements that needs to be met for telco specific applications. So in that regard, if you look at what's available today in open source community, the biggest challenge is getting support for the software that's provided by the op open source community. And when we have operators are providing mission critical services to the consumers, you cannot afford hours of outages where you're trying to debug a software because it's a security bug or there's a software upgrade process and something is broken. So that will, challenge is the number one factor. We talked about the any cloud environment in which these applications will be deployed. And if you look at this distributed cloud, which can be running at the edge or it could be in different environments, um, the software needs to be able to support uh, such a deployment. And when you're talking about edge, the software needs to be able to deploy in very small footprint. You need to be able to integrate into the CI CD framework, which can support the telco applications. And when we look across what's available in the open source community, there is software that's available in, in being worked in different bodies, but being able to package it and make it available as a supported version that the operators can rely on is the biggest challenge, which is leading towards either operator doing it themselves, which generally we've not seen operators being successful in like the hyperscalers have, or they rely on commercial distributions to support their critical workloads that are running in, in different cloud environments. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, now, now, there's a, a lot of focus on the use of AI and machine learning in 5G. Uh, what is your assessment of where service providers stand today with regards to the application of these technologies? And, and what opportunity is there to use these technologies with 5G? Uh, is it optional? Uh, and what's Mavenir doing in this space? I would say AI ML is being adopted to a big extent among operators. And today the initial use cases are reduction in OPEX. It's either performance optimization or reduction in CAPEX through network optimization. And um, in, when, when it comes to 5G, I would say that this is no longer optional. It's going to be mandatory because if you look at 5G, it needs to support very large number of devices. You need to support low latency applications and you need to support high data rate. And all of this means you will have a diverse set of applications that are generating heterogeneous mix of data. And when you have such an environment, to be able to react to your network is not a good design. You need to be proactive in how your network is managed. And that's where AI ML comes in because you could learn from these complex data patterns and make 5G the truly autonomous network with which you could design and run the network based on data. So that's one part of it. The second part is that Using AI ML, you could also use, uh, use the technology to generate new revenue opportunities. I talked earlier about how customer engagement becomes digital. And with AI ML, you can now identify those hidden patterns that customers have. You could improve the customer experience or you could start selling them new services once you've identified these things. Another key part to it is also doing proper capacity forecasting using AI ML. And this, is, this could actually change the way in which operators manage the expenses. We know at least uh, one large operator who's actually looking at moving completely away from traditional engineering methods where once you hit 80% capacity or 70% capacity, you, you build out your network, right? So instead of doing that approach, you move towards an AI ML based planning where you can anticipate the network loads better. You could scale it as demand, on demand as needed. And all of this means that you now have a quantifiable link between what is available in terms of return investment. And Mavenir again can help in this space. We've got several products, radio specific, there's something called the radio intelligent controller, and there's a whole network analytics. We've got products which rely 
on end-to-end -end automation capabilities that uses AI ML as the base, um, some uh, products that are called out around orchestration slicing, and of course, fraud management, robocall blocking, or other solutions that we offer that leverages AI ML. Now, of interest to many in the industry is the performance of 5G network functions running on general purpose hardware. And what kind of technology advancements can help with the performance of virtualized network functions? And what has Mavenir been doing in this regard? And, and how can those advances benefit service providers? Yeah, so generally, I would say, apart from the well-known benefits of having lower OPEX and CAPEX, when you're running in general purpose hardware, it fundamentally changes the way in which software is delivered as well. For example, now we could have all applications running on common Linux-based distributions. You could use platforms such as Kubernetes as an example. Instead of building your own proprietary platform, you could rely on what's commercially available. Um, and that means that you can now use those automation tools that comes along with it. With the cloud-native software, with it's available, you could now also integrate into common CI-CD framework, which would help with your testing, your rollout much faster. And what, if, what all of this means is that at the end of the day, the operator now has bigger choices in terms of picking best of breed for different components. If we look at Mavenir's history, we started as a software company and every generation change, whether it's 2G, 3G, 4G, or 5G, we actually added more products into a portfolio when the general compute could support those functions. So today, if we look at commercial off-the-shelf servers or card servers, it can meet the capacity and performance needs of many applications and workloads that it could not do a few years ago. So unlike a competition that's actually focused on selling software that's bundled with the proprietary hardware, we've taken a fundamentally different approach, which means that we've worked in optimizing a software to run on these general purpose compute CPUs or GPUs. We are focused on moving software, which is done using ASICs in the case of radio to now run on software and intelligently move functions as needed into smart mix as an example. So and maybe I should call out the example with the Packet Core product where recently we had announced uh, traffic offload with the NVIDIA Mellanox based Nix, which gives us very high performance. So this is ways in which we've actually worked the technology to actually move things from custom hardware into software and intelligently use smart Nix or switch fabric offload as needed to optimize in performance. Now, while the IT industry has embraced digital transformation, the telcos are still catching up a little bit. Uh, how is Mavenir helping telcos with their digital transformation initiatives, especially in the radio access network? Yeah, I would say if we look at uh, the operator networks, the operators are well known to, to build very large scale network, high performance networks. But if we look at the way these networks have been built over the years, it's mostly been integrated solutions where software is bundled with proprietary hardware. And what that leads to is, is lack of flexibility in these networks, higher cost, and then closed vendor lock-in as well. And over the years, the operators have now been forced to move towards this disaggregated software-based approach. We have seen it happen in different parts of the operator network. We saw it happen in the core first for voice and messaging. Now we're seeing it happen in the access and edge and transport domains. And where Mavenir can help in this whole journey is that we can extract our value out of the existing assets. So as operators move towards web scale or move towards software defined networks with our, with our solutions, we can help them integrate into automation tools. Of course, with our portfolio, we can also give them solutions which are disaggregated software based solutions, even on the access side. So open RAN solution, it's a software based solution, but we can function as the SI or the system integrator, even in this delivery and provide solutions that can meet or exceed the, uh, the performance that's currently being delivered on traditional closed, those inflexible uh, hardware-based proprietary solutions. So that's how Mavenir can help operators in this digital journey. And concerns are still often raised about the suitability of Open RAN, uh, particularly by some of the mobile industry's major vendors. What's the issue here? Uh, and is Open RAN really ready? Yeah, I mean, if you look at any operator network, most of the expense goes towards the radio access layer. It's usually 80-20 ratio, where 80% goes towards the radio access layer. And that spend is close to 40 billion in a year. And today, more than 90% of that spend is dominated by four players. 
just between Ericsson and Nokia, it's close to 50% of that spend. So of course, there is a big incentive for the traditional players to protect that revenue. But I would say there's no stopping open RAN. We heard the Ericsson CEO in Q4 2020 earnings say that starting 2023, the revenues are going to be impacted by open RAN. We've also seen huge momentum in open RAN in the last couple of months. If we take the European leading operators, they signed an MOU to adopt open RAN. Also sovereigns and governments have stepped in. They've either committed or going through appropriations and allocating funds towards promoting open RAN. But you're right that there is a constant stream of FUD when we look at the performance issues that are raised by our, by a competition, the traditional players, I should say, whether it's performance issues or whether it's security and our power utilization. I would say in each one of these cases, the, the open RAN community has stepped up and has addressed these problems and shown that it's, it's actually not an issue. Another argument that we often hear is that uh, the amount of investment that the traditional players put in R&D it dots the spends of the open RAN software-based vendors. But what's forgotten in this argument is that we're standing behind the spend of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars behind the open RAN ecosystem players, whether it's the FPGA, the SOC players like Intel, NVIDIA, Marvel, Xilinx, or the hardware players who are looking to optimize the solution, the HPs, the Dell, the Supermicros, or the hyperscalers you're getting in this space as well. So, with regard to readiness of open RAN, I would say the proof is in the pudding. I mean, if you just look at where Mavenir is at, we're now close to more than 15 deployments, live deployments that's happening today, open RAN. We got more than 25 active trials that's happening globally. And uh, just if you look at the US, you've got DISH, which would have a large scale deployment uh, coming this year. There's proven TCO benefits that's, uh, that's happened with the open RAN deployments. And we matched the KPIs if we look at the deployments in, in, in urban places in India, as an example, with Vodafone India. So I would say Open RAN is real, it's happening right now, and, and vendors like Mavenir are leading this space. Well, yes, Bijoy, it certainly seems like the Open RAN train has left the station, so it'll be interesting to see how far it goes this year and in the future. So we've covered a lot of ground today. Bijoy, great to talk to you, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having Mavenir on the air with you. We look forward to having discussions like this in the future as well.